what it do, snackers and snackettes. It's your boy Gage here. This is Snacking and Hanging, episode number 47. This is the Loading Snacks podcast. I have one of the usual suspects in the building with me. New Joker, speak to the people, please. What's going on, everybody? Everybody say hi back. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> jokes. We yes, got. Sir? We kind we kind of have a lot on the on the on the docket today. I mean, it's not a lot, I guess, but I I, I mean, there's a lot to discuss. There's a lot happening, um, but there is something that was not part of the plan that happened earlier today. I mean, we knew it was coming. We just didn't know what, was gonna, what the details were going to be. Um, Pokemon Go got an update today, right? It did. Are you excited about this? So I mean, as of now, uh, they've only officially said that. There's two major additions right now, being Togepi and Pichu. And they say it's some others, but of course they weren't specific about those. But they did mention that these will be from, the Pokemon that will be in this update are from the Johto region, which would be, in a sense, the year, the second generation of Pokemon. Which so, is what, gold and silver, right? Gold and silver. Okay. Okay. So, these two characters they announced Pichu I want to call him Pichu when I see it it just seems (laughs) like that would be right but I mean are these important characters like are they you know what I mean like I guess I I saw something that said like you can only get them out of eggs I guess yeah you can they only hatch from eggs right now Um, between the two I think Togepi would be the one that's probably more familiar to anyone than anyone else because Misty carried him around for however many seasons for a while so that's probably a little more familiar pichu showed up in a couple of the movies which is actually the the preform before pikachu so yeah pichu pikachu raichu gotcha pichu pikachu raichu so Mm. pichu is a lower form of pikachu exactly so why would you want that why would you want, the, like, why does that make sense? Why would they add a lower form than one that's already available? I think it, maybe it they wanted to do it to show you that we're going to start throwing in some of the, the other forms. Because, like, there were some Pokemon that initially, like, say, a Pikachu, for instance, you always thought that that was the first form and right. Raichu was the final form. So I guess they wanted to kind of show there was going to be, you know, that that stage being added to it as well um i mean being being that you're gonna have to hatch them from eggs like i, I kind of figured they were going to do something like that i literally have probably like 10 eggs that i've just i've held on to like i didn't want to do anything yeah. with them until after this update came through so i hatched two of them but of course n- neither one of them came out of either one of those eggs of so course. of, of and course not. then as another little addition to it, there's a, a special Pikachu that you can catch. Um, he's actually got a little Santa hat on for the oh, whole yeah. Christmas time. Yeah, yeah, I thought yeah. that was a little cool, but they weren't specific to say if, you know, after Christmas, like, the hat's just going to disappear or if this Pikachu is going to have the hat forever. They didn't say that, though. I mean, what difference does it make? He doesn't do <laughs> anything special, right? He just happens to have a hat, right? I mean, sure it's not enough. like... Okay. I mean, is this enough? Like, is this is this going to get people involved again? Like, okay, obviously the two they announced, you know, you know there's something going on there. But, mm-hmm. you know, considering, I guess, the Pokemon that are being added, you know, that come from gold and silver, is this the thing that gets kind of... Because, you know, it's 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 died off considerably. Agreed. Um, I, I, as much is this going to do it? As much as I love gold and silver... Right, like the only thing that doesn't do it for me right now is because we're still we still haven't heard of any of the legendaries from the first generation. Right, it's like we know they're planning some form of events or anything for these guys to roll out, but that's been what everybody's been waiting for. Like the Arnakuno, the Zapdos, Moltres, Mewtwo, Mew. Like those five. If any one of those five would have been added, I think any of those would have caused people to hop back onto this in a heartbeat. Togepi, I feel like nostalgia people want to just have Togepi just for kicks, but 
Mm-hmm. It's not like it just immediately wanted me to pick up my phone and, you know, go out and walk 10 miles and hope I can get toga pee and peach you out of an egg. Yeah, I don't. OK. I mean, again, this is not my thing. This is your thing. That's why I'm, <laughs> you know, deferring to you, sir. But mm, I don't I'm just know, hoping, sir. I'm just hoping maybe this was just the the start of announcements maybe as much because to me this that was not a huge announcement yes at the fact that they said yeah we're gonna have some gen 2 gold and silver pokemon show up but they weren't specific about you know how many or who it is i mean i would at least expect they should do like the three starters kind of like how they deal with yeah charmander bulbasaur and uh squirtle how you could just pick one of them up right from the beginning of pokemon go yeah I think that would have been kind of cool to do, kind of following in that same footstep. But I just want legendaries at this point. Like, I just feel it's really, truly going to mean something to say, yo, I caught a Mewtwo. And, like, only a handful of people could get their hand on Mewtwo. It could even be, um, maybe they're going to wait until, I don't want to say end game, but after a certain level, maybe once you hit level 40, once you hit level 50, if that, whenever that becomes available... Maybe that's how you're going to get access to them. And if they did that, I think that would make some people want to play again and keep going to try to get to the level to get to them. But I think that's going to be a toner off for a lot of people as well, too. Yeah. Because the sheer amount of experience that you need to get for some of these, like anything over 30, it's like ridiculous the amount of experience that you have to have. Well, I will tell you, I'm looking at an article now that it literally just popped up on Twitter from Kotaku that says that <clears throat> what they've managed to find out, let's see, players today have found that seven new baby Pokemon don't hatch at the same rate. Here are the rates players are currently reporting. Iggly Buff and Cleffa hatch from 2k eggs. Okay. Uh, Pichu and to- Togepi? Togepi. Sure, if you say so. Hatch from 5k eggs. And Magby, Elekid, and Smoochum hatch from 10k eggs. Okay. Um, and then it just says... Hold on. It also says... Let's see. Topagi can evolve into second generation Pokemon Togetic. Togetic? Yep. Okay. With 50 candies. That's not bad. Implying that first-generation Pokemon may be able to evolve as well, or that other gold and silver Pokemon are still hiding. Uh, it also says that players um, that have gotten the the holiday-themed Pikachu with the Santa hat, mm-hmm. um, when it evolves into Raichu, it keeps the hat. Huh. And they have pictures, so I'll shoot you the link. Anyway, okay, so... Maybe, maybe not. This is not necessarily like a a done deal, so mm-hmm. to speak. I think it's the start. I think it's a start. Because, I mean, with them adding, they've done the course. Starbucks has now become the first partner in the U.S. Right. Um, to do something with Pokemon Go. Like, I, I, like, I don't even, I'm not even excited for the drink. Like, it's a, it's a Frappuccino. I'm like, yeah. you want to release a cold drink? right now <laughs> as the if it had been like a coffee or a hot chocolate or something like that yeah i, mean, I don't know i mean at least in our area <laughs> let me say it that way in our area right now with it being cold i think i'd rather have a hot beverage but yeah whatever and you're also brown some people drink cold beverages <laughs> in the winter time let's just let's just keep it as real as possible um hey so listen i'm ready to move on from I mean, it's not that, you know, again, I think I respect, that was enough, I, enough touch. Yeah, I think people get yeah. the gist for it. Good. I, I hope you all have had enough. If not, feel free to let me know. It's not going to change the fact that we're moving on now to be too late. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so check this out, man. I, I've been kind of thinking, um, along the lines of, uh, you know, <clears throat> PlayStation just had their, their, their PSX, PlayStation Experience, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, Microsoft doesn't really have anything like that for the Xbox. I, there was a time when they did something like that, like, years ago, like, in, I, I don't know, like, 05 or 06 or something like that. Then um, they did it for a couple years. 
Um, but they don't really have anything like that. And I think it's a really cool kind of a thing that, you know, you can kind of go, it's, it's just like going to, you know, a comic book convention for us. You know, one of the things that we always talk about when we go to a convention or while we're there or come from one is just kind of like the camaraderie. Like clearly mm. you have people that are DC people or Marvel people or, you know, valiant people or, you know, whatever that are there. But at the end of it, it's like everybody who's there is somebody who's there because they love comic books and comic book characters and so forth. And like the cosplayers and like no matter what size you are or what color you are. I mean, I'm sure there's some stuff, but for the most part, like it's all love. And there are just people there that are there to enjoy the same thing because they all enjoy the same thing. Um, and so I do kind of feel like Microsoft could benefit from some, you know, something like that. But as I was kind of looking at some of the things that, that, you know, Sony has done or has been doing, um, on their end, uh, I've been kind of looking at, you know, Microsoft and, you know, some of the things that I think might be, um, a good idea for them. Uh, and part of what got me on this was that I noticed they didn't really talk about things like they pretty much kept it to games like they didn't talk about PlayStation View um, mm -hmm. or anything like that at at all, really. Um, however, um, PlayStation View has kind of grown into a, a kind of a strong candidate, especially for cord cutters. Right. I'll I mean, agree. right. Don't you have PlayStation View? I do. OK, so I feel like Microsoft needs something to kind of combat this. Um, but I also just was kind of thinking in terms of, you know, we've had Xbox Live for like over a decade now. Sounds um, about right. And we've had, you know, there's been Xbox Live Gold for about that long, about a decade, something like that now. I mean, you figure... It, if if it wasn't available before then it certainly launched when the 360 did mm -hmm. um and <clears throat> they've made some changes and stuff to it but my my question is is it now time for an Xbox Live platinum and mm. i'm asking this because i think that with the Scorpio coming that the idea of having something that says again you're offering what you're saying is a premium product we don't know what price is going to be like um you know they, we obviously have ideas and theories we don't know what price is going to be like though but if you figure at this point you're paying sixty dollars a year to be Xbox Live Gold and that gives you access to mostly play games online and then you get some free games each month it's basically what it comes down to because it used to be that you had to have that say if you wanted to access netflix or something like that and you still had to pay whatever the monthly fee was to netflix or whatever if you actually wanted to use netflix on your xbox right right okay so to me something like an xbox live platinum means that it's got to do things like have different levels that include and allow you to choose between subscriptions to things like HBO Go or Funimation, Showtime, Sling TV, even Netflix and Hulu. That, you know, part of what you pay to, you know, Microsoft, that $60 you pay. Let's say now it's $80 a year. For that matter, let's say it's $100 a year, okay? Which is not something ridiculous to consider twelve dollars a month right if you you know you know or something like that if you you know break it down over the course break of out. you know whatever but let's say it includes subscriptions to like three things you get a certain amount of savings that comes across where like you get a netflix subscription and say a sling tv subscription and hulu let's say those three or you know hbo go Netflix and, I don't know, Amazon Prime, you know, something mm -hmm. like that, right? Um, because I think that, one, they do need a way to rival PlayStation View. I think that having gone the extra mile and put the, the HDMI input on um, the Xbox One, 
so that you could connect your TV to it and control your TV and that kind of, I think that's a great step in that direction. But I think when it comes down to it, you know, it's just kind of like there are certain things that come on HBO people want to watch. Certain things that come on Showtime people want to watch. Certain things that come on Netflix people want to watch, right? So if you could find a way to bundle and save, if Microsoft was, say, the catalyst, and if that Xbox Live Platinum account worked across all your Microsoft stuff, which is kind of the direction Microsoft is going, right? So it's not just for your Xbox, but it's also on your Windows PC, right? You still have those accounts, right? You still have paid this one fee to Microsoft that's allowing you to access, you know, Hulu and Showtime or whatever on these, you know, wherever you are. Um, right. What do you think about something like this? I mean, is it, do you think Microsoft needs to do something like this or am I just, you know, I don't know, kind of pulling it out of the air? No, I think they should. Because, I mean, especially just like you said, the cable cutters, like, and I'm one of them. Right. And now don't get me wrong. Initially, obviously, I didn't buy the PlayStation just for PlayStation View. We didn't even know about View when the 4 came out initially. Right. But if you told me, hey, you can get this game system pay your, say if you wanted to do PlayStation Plus, like say even PlayStation did PlayStation Plus, and you could do the view for like a hundred bucks. Like, that's a good selling point. Yeah. And I think for Microsoft, just like you said, being able to hook your cable box up to the Xbox and being able to control and do all that stuff, it's awesome. But if you tell me that I can just hook my Xbox up, I can subscribe, have this one subscription, and literally I can sit here, I can play games and I can switch over and I can access TV if I wanted to. I think that that's an absolute game changer, period. Yeah. Cause I mean, PlayStation View has already has already made absolute changes with the way that they do this. I mean, they just added a fourth tier okay. to theirs and it actually includes HBO. Wow. So, HBO yeah. in Showtime. Right. So it's like, and it's like, it's like $65 a month. Okay. Normally with a lot of the cable providers, you're probably paying $20, $25 for one of those stations by itself. Yeah. I mean, usually like if you're signing up for a brand new subscription or something to a cable company, it might be like 12, 12, 12, 50 or something. You know what I mean? For like a month or something like that. But still... I mean, because PlayStation View is giving you access to a bunch of other channels on top of those. Of course. So now here's my question. How much more appealing might something like PlayStation View be to you if because you were a member of PlayStation Plus, you got some kind of a discount for View? If, they, if You know what I mean? Like if they were tied in together because they're not, right? Nope. They're not two totally different things. You got to have PlayStation Plus, of course, in order to do, well, I don't think. I don't think you had to have PlayStation Plus to do View. Right. Because I know with View, you if you have Plus, with some of the additional stations, you get a discount on there. Like I know with um, the Spanish pack, it's like okay. $5 normally. But if you have PlayStation Plus, you get like a dollar off of it. So, okay. So there are some mm-hmm. there are some benefits for certain channels. Mm-hmm. You know, Same thing. I you... know Showtime. Showtime is one of them. You do get a discount if you're subscribing to PlayStation Plus while you're subscribed to Showtime. But if okay. you have it a part of the package, then it doesn't really matter in there for it. But right. just being able to offer that discount on there. And I mean, they could, eventually they could go deeper with it. Um, as maybe, you know, let's say Microsoft does come out with a platform, something similar like this to it. I'm sure both of them are going to have to start putting forward the effort to make something a little bit different between the two of them to make you want to come over to them. Right. I mean, we have seen, you know, Microsoft work in the past with like AT&T's cable company, um, you know, in the South, um, Florida mm-hmm. and so forth. You know, they've, they've had cable tuners and things like that that work directly on the Xbox so you didn't have to have a cable box, that kind of thing. Um, it is, um, I think a good idea for them to have something like this. Now, the idea of having Xbox Live Platinum doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be something like a TV subscription, but I think that PlayStation View is probably the thing that Sony has 
currently over Microsoft that Microsoft needs to focus on the most. Um, you know, as people continue to, to cut cords, like Microsoft spent a lot of time trying to be that focal point that, you know, in control of your living room kind of thing. Um, and <clears throat> I mean, I think it makes sense that Sony is doing it and didn't make it. This is the primary thing that the PlayStation 4 is going after. They made games the focus. And that's kind of where mm -hmm. Microsoft has gone since Phil Spencer has taken over. But, you know, to me, I think that there should be some other benefit. You know what I mean? I don't necessarily think it needs to be. T like, I, you know, I don't, I don't really care about HBO. Um, you know, some people it's a big deal. Um, or really Showtime for me. But I already pay a subscription to Netflix. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm paying that anyway. So if you told me that, yeah, I'm going to get it and I'm going to get 4K, I'm going to benefit by having some sort of a discount and I'm going to get some other Microsoft initiative. Like, I don't know. What else would you think that they should throw in to something like that? Know uh, you know what I mean? Right. Again, because you can kind of piecemeal it and make different packages and that kind of thing. But, you know, should it be an extra game a month that's available to you if you're platinum that you don't get if you're gold? Should it be a higher tier discount? should be you know something like that could work maybe say you get x game for free maybe you get a good like some of the dlc for free with it i know with some of the games for gold you don't necessarily get like full access to any like dlc add-ons depending on the game that you go with um right right little, i mean every now and again like, like it'll be something like sleeping dogs that they offer was the definitive edition so it basically included everything that everything. came out but the definitive edition itself includes that it's not like you know they they're giving you here's the game and then here's all the dlc separately kind of thing it's it's there's a difference um but i hear you on that um you know look let's let's just be honest the avatar thing is kind of out the window i'm sure people mm. are still spending money in it you know on there somewhere but um you know, it's not like those kinds of things would be beneficial, you know, or whatever. I actively take place in like the X, you know, take part in the Xbox Live rewards program stuff, um, which is cool. It's nice to just kind of pop in there every now and again and see like, oh, you have, you know, this amount of credit just kind of sitting here waiting for you to do something with it. Um, and it tends to influence certain purchases, just to be honest. Um but I do think that when you consider, I think that having something that maybe gives you a subscription to some of the more obscure uh, channels, like a Funimation, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Or something like that, where, I mean, you got a lot of people that love and are into anime and, you know, what have you. So if, you know, if you said, well, yeah, Xbox Live Platinum includes a subscription to that automatically, and then you can piecemeal and put in Netflix or put in whatever. Obviously, if you, you know, you you have to you have to because again I I imagine the majority of people that have Xbox Live Gold are already paying a subscription for a lot of these services, probably, probably. Hulu and Netflix, right? So mm -hmm. you kind of have to give that away, sort of. Um, but you got to find a way to to do it and to make it work and 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 be smart. Um, but I mean I you know I don't know like like Microsoft tends to do these these uh, polls. And when they do them, they're usually asking like, hey, what kind of benefits or rewards would you like to see come more often from like Xbox Live Rewards or, you know, something like that. Um, and so I think it's, it's, you know, at this point, it's been a long time. It might be time to kind of step that up and say, okay, if you're gold, cool, you're paying for this, you know, you get what you've always gotten. We're not going to take anything away from you, but... To step it up a level and create, you know, an Xbox Live Platinum, but you also have to sell it. Like, you really have to make it seem like it's worth the effort and the <laughs> the, the, the additional money. Um, you know, you got to kind of show off what those savings are going to be and how that's going to be effective for somebody. Um, you know, I, the other thing about that is PlayStation Plus... Um, while having technically taken a step down by becoming something you have to have in order to play in order to play online, which for a long time that was the big thing about PlayStation Plus was like you don't have to have it to play online. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> PlayStation gives away 
a lot more in terms of games. Now, obviously, you have to be bought further into their ecosystem because they give away like two PS3 games and two Vita games and two PS4 right. games and whatever. So technically, the monetary value of what they give away is higher for people who are totally bought into that system. If you're somebody like me who really only has a PlayStation 4, PlayStation 3 games don't mean anything to you. The Vita games don't mean anything to you. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just, you know, but there are certainly people who, for those people they're giving that stuff away to, there's a lot of money that's, you know what I mean, kind of coming out of there. So I do feel like Microsoft needs to kind of step that up. You know, it, it took that pressure from PlayStation Plus to even get Microsoft to do something like this because they didn't used to give you, you know what I mean, anything for being a an Xbox Live Gold member. You were just right. paying them, you know what I mean, to... to to play online and so now that they are giving away games or give you know stuff like that but it 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 might be nice to be able to do something like like what if they did this and we can kind of end it after this just tell me what you think about this what if being a member of xbox live platinum automatically got you beta access any games that Mm -hmm. did a beta access if you were on xbox live and you have platinum you're automatically in That'd be cool. You know what I'm saying? That'd I'm just, be cool. You know, not that not that beta access isn't something already that, you know, you can get in for free, but you have to be able to get in. You have to get in, right? And so when they're doing these early kind of, you know, like the preview program is cool. Maybe you automatically get the stuff that comes in the preview program because there's not that much of it. Usually it's a little bit cheaper. Or let's say you get a higher, you get a discount that's even bigger than what that is for being a member of the preview program. Um, for, you know, for those games that, you know, are still kind of in that early phase and they're not, you know, something like that, you know, that speaks to gaming specifically that could be beneficial, um, to somebody, you know, for something like that. Or if you even got a discount period across the board, when you made purchases directly from Microsoft, be they digital purchases, kind of like how EA access you're paying for the yearly fee but you automatically get 10 percent off any game you buy digitally right that so because that's not because that'd be awesome because like for me you know i got my gamers club and it's like it's it's hard for me to want to just buy certain games out of like on xbox live when i could still get my 20 percent off but i'm really enjoying now just going mm-hmm. digital and making things a lot simpler well and that's course, the thing right you got that's best buy right and now amazon mm-hmm. does the same thing amazon does it as well too if you're, but you have to be a Prime member. So you're paying a $100 membership, and Prime comes with a lot of benefits. I'm not going to try to make it sound like you got to pay them $100 to get 20% off a game. But you also have to do the physical copy. You don't get that 20% yep. off of the digital copies, which doesn't really make any sense. But that basically means they're going to give you a game that, you know, you're paying for the game in the special edition. It's $100. You're going to get $20 off of that game. And they're going to ship it to you for free. You know what I mean? Like, you're not going to pay shipping, too. It seems like it, you know, it doesn't really make sense. But companies like Microsoft and and Sony have to come up with a way to entice people to go digital. They just, mm-hmm. they do, so that they'll buy from them and buy from their stores. I don't want a discount that lets me get a, a physical disc shipped to me from a Microsoft store. Right. You know what I mean? But if you told me that instead of paying $60 a year, I could pay $80 a year, it included a subscription to, like, Funimation or a discount on, you know, Netflix or something like that, plus I get a 10% discount when I buy my games from them. Now, if I have that and I still get my 10% discount from EA, you know what I mean, for having – or if it just automatically includes EA Access – you know what I'm saying? So instead of you paying the $35 a year directly to EA, you pay Microsoft an additional 20 It now comes with EA access, and you just get that their 10% plus the other 10% that you get for all the mic all the games that you download through the Xbox. Like that's the kind of thing that I'm that I'm looking for. That would be like, okay, this would be worth it. I'm going platinum. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um Nonetheless, listen, ladies and gentlemen, those of you who are listening, um, just drop us a comment, shoot us a line, let us know what do you think would be a good idea for something that, you know, Microsoft should do if they were to step it up and go to an Xbox Live Platinum. 
what price ranges would be good price ranges and what kinds of things do you think should be included? What would you be willing to pay? Um, hit us up. Let us know what you think. Um, let's take a quick break and let's talk about Universal Studios and Nintendo. Sound good? Sounds good. Cool. We'll be right back. We are back. Snacking and hanging, episode 47. Gage a new Joker in the building. Mm-hmm. Uh, keep in mind, you can reach me whenever you feel like it. I am at Empty Shells, M T S H E L L Z, across the social media networks and so forth. Or you can email me at gage.loadingsnacks at gmail.com. New Joker, New Joker 89, across the social venues. Um, my man. So last week, <laughs> we got a chance to see Jimmy Fallon play the Nintendo Switch and play mm. Super Mario Run, which is coming out this week. Maybe be out by the time you hear this. Mm-hmm. Um, but we also got an announcement from Universal Studios and Nintendo. Um. Which we already knew that they were kind of working on some stuff. Um, this just kind of filled in some more of the blanks and told us what's what. Um, there actually was an article that came out today that was saying that, like, the first, I guess, like, park area they're going to do at Universal Studios in Japan is going to be called, like, Super Nintendo World. Uh, which is odd to me. Yeah. Um, because it's in Japan and they didn't have a Super Nintendo in Japan. They had a Super Famicom, <laughs> but it's not Super Camp Famicom World. I mean, that's not what it said anyway. Maybe that's what it is, and they just said Nintendo for us. Um, but here's the thing. I'm wondering whether or not this partnership between Universal Studios and Nintendo um, might lead to Nintendo-themed movies. Because Nintendo has been kind of changing gears a little bit. They're doing things to make money and increase their outreach or at least change their outreach um, over the last couple of years. Um, You know, I think that Nintendo has come to the realization that even kids don't really care about Nintendo anymore. Like, for a long time, Nintendo managed to stick around because it was the system for kids. And so parents who weren't sure that they wanted their children to play Grand Theft Auto bought their kids a GameCube. You know what I mean? Or they bought a Wii. Um, And the hardcore gamer or the, you know, if you actually go back and you look at the kinds of games that were available on the original NES, they're, they're way more mature than just Mario games. You know what I mean? Ninja Gaiden and Contra sure. and Metal Gear. You know what I mean? Those are all games that debuted. You know, Metroid. They're all games that debuted on the Nintendo system. And somewhere along the lines, it seemed like Nintendo lost their way and, in my opinion, got to a point where they could no longer compete with more adult, the more adult content that was coming from Sony and then coming from Microsoft. And, again, by the time Microsoft entered the race... There was still kind of this fight for, like, a mascot thing kind of happening. Um, I feel like at that point, uh, Sony had kind of given up on Crash. But you still had Microsoft doing stuff like Blinks the Time Cat and, like, Voodoo Vince, which is getting a remake. (laughs) Um, You know, a remaster, by the way. Because, uh, you know... Nintendo's mascot, Mario, is still so strong, still so strong, or was still so still so strong then, and continues to be strong, but it's strong more from a nostalgic standpoint than a kids now care standpoint. Um, kids now Definitely. are much more sophisticated. Kirby is not the way. It just, it just, it isn't. You know what I mean? It's not <laughs> that they're not cool or cute or cuddly, but even if you look at you know, even when I was growing up, like, Mario was cool, but Mario wasn't necessarily cool because he was cuddly or something like that. Like, 
Think about it. The reason why Sonic kind of came in and stuck around was because Sonic had an attitude. He was kind of like a bad boy. And so he was designed to rival Mario, not just in mascot for mascot, but in terms of attitude and who he was. And like, you know, kind of being, I don't really care, you know, kind of thing. I'm fast and I'm in a hurry and I'm going to go get, you know, just whatever. Um, And so kids, it's just... It's changed. If you look at the kind of TV shows they watch and things like it's just all that has changed. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, as I look at what Nintendo's been doing to kind of change, I think partially their image. If you look at the Switch, the Switch doesn't look like it's something for kids. Um, especially it in stark contrast to what the Wii U looks like. Like the Wii U tablet looks like a Fisher Price my first iPad. Like, it's big and bulky <laughs> and super cheap, plasticky looking. It's just like, you know, like the 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 Wii Remote isn't terrible looking or feeling. But the Nunchuck is like when you buy a bag of chips and it's mostly air. Like, it's just a really light piece of plastic. That, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's, you know... Um, where the Switch just looks like something an adult wouldn't mind carrying around. Like, let's imagine for a second that the Wii U did what it felt like they were trying to promise when they first debuted it and made it look like, you know, oh, you can just take this on screen and go wherever you want with it. Still, want- would that be something that an adult would want to be caught dead walking around with? No. Kids? Um... It depends on the adult. Would you? Because I think I that would. a 3DS I play, looks well, much more adult and sturdy and solid than the Wii than the Wii U gamepad. Hmm. I'm not saying. Listen, I'm not saying you yeah. wouldn't carry yeah. it around, or that other people wouldn't carry it around had it been able to do what the Switch is now supposed to be able to do. What I'm saying is it wouldn't be something that you would want to carry around. Like, sure, you would do it because you could, but compared to being able to pull out, say, an iPad or your tablet or your laptop or a 3DS, what would you rather be seen using and i think the the wii u pad loses every time you know what i mean just aesthetically so i'm just wondering whether or not anybody has considered the possibility that the success of nintendo's theme parks could i mean again this is universal they make movies lead to nintendo having movies again whether they are animated or live action would remain to be seen but do you think that's somewhere that maybe that's contractually in there somewhere or that there's already something in place for them to try this kind of a thing i mean i know it's possible do you think (laughs) i mean i'm sure it is at this point, at this point in time, what would you want to see? Like, do you think they have something? If they, if let's say, let's say, it's already contractually in place. What do you think they're working on? Just opens the door for stuff. I don't know even know what I will, what I, what would I want to see? Is it first? is it that's, Zelda? That's my question, huh? See, for me, like we've had that kind of like. Not necess- maybe a Zelda game that may pull me into it. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I've played, for me, probably my favorite out of the, at least the Zelda games that I've okay. played, I would say it's okay Ocarina of Time. Um, uh, I picked it up, of course, originally, and then I got it on the 3DS right. when they did the release for it. Um, so, I, I just feel it's just got to be the right type of Zelda game. Like, I've seen the previews for the new one, and, you know, for me, it... It doesn't hundred percent right. do it for me. Um, now, don't get me wrong. By the time it comes out, get we get our hands on it and start playing. It could be a different story, but I'm not at that point where I'm just like, oh yeah, I'm so, getting that when so it let comes me ask you out. This. I'm just not. 
You're born in what, 89? Okay. 89? Does Nintendo actually have properties you care about? And I want you to really think about this for a second because uh, Smash yeah, Brothers I'm... doesn't count. Because Smash Brothers is a property that just pulls from other properties. So outside of True. Pokemon, which we already know that there is a, a, a Pikachu movie in the works. We already know that. So we're obviously mm-hmm. talking about something other than Pokemon. Do they have... Right. Is there a Nintendo franchise that matters to you? Donkey Kong, Mario, Metroid, Zelda. What do they have? What do you care about? The only thing that I would say would be Star Fox. Okay. You're a Star Fox fan. So would you like to see a Star Fox? I mean, a Star Fox movie might not be a bad idea. I think I think that's something that could work. That probably, honestly, it would be one of the uh, it'd be a three D movie. I think I don't Live think action. you should try to make that into a that would be bad real life thing. I don't be know really how bad. well that would necessarily work, but I, that would be something. If they made if they made a Star Fox movie, okay. I would so absolutely a, go see it. Star Fox would be the property. I would absolutely for go you. see it. I'd be leaning more. To, I would like to see them take an adult approach, almost in uh, you know. I don't know. What's that movie where Matt Damon got lost on Mars? I almost want to see that kind of an approach to like a Metroid movie, maybe. Female female protagonist. Kind of thing. Which is always good. Um, great for, for publicity. Great for, you know, the idea of, you know, this person who's out there by themselves, you know, in a solitary kind of a, you know, setup that... You know, more than I want to see it. Like, I just don't... I don't care about them. Uh, like, a Mario movie doesn't do anything for me. Um, nah, it doesn't. We already seen, we've already seen... We've already seen a Mario movie and what that can do. As much as I... As much as for whatever reason I like to watch that movie, at the same time, in the back of my mind, I'm just like... I really want to okay. call you a liar right now for saying that you like watching that movie, but you were... No, I, I honestly, I, I may, maybe it's because, like, I like John Leguizamo, and I think that was the more reason why I watched that Come movie. On, man. I the, mean, yeah, how was... terrible is that to say? Uh, I, you know, I mean, <laughs> is there potential for there to be something else that they could do that might be interesting to kids? Like, I could almost see a Splatoon TV show. I don't know that I see a Splatoon movie. That could happen. Um, because they can milk out more toys, especially with the, Well, either way, movie or TV series, but definitely TV series. That would definitely be able to milk some toys out of that. Because that's typically whenever um, television series comes on, it always is going to help depend on that, how well they can move those right. toys to go along with it as well. Yeah, too. I mean, I think that there's a potential to take something like a Splatoon and turn it into something a little more Pokemon-like in terms of having a, you know, a weekly show. Um, but as far as, like, the rest of their properties, I just, I don't really... <laughs> I don't really see it. I mean, look, Zelda, I think, could make a great series of movies because all Zelda games essentially take place in a different time slash different place, sort of. You know what I mean? Like, they're all in Hyrule, but they're all very different, Mm -hmm. which means that, like, it wouldn't be a big deal. Like, you don't need to do a part one, a part two, a part three. You just make it The Legend of Zelda, and you give it a colon and add a name to it, right? You have no idea, you know, I, maybe Ganon is always the enemy, but how you have to get to him or what has to happen or, you know, are you traveling through time? Is it a young Link? Is it an old Link? Um, you know... Like, all of those kind of variables and factors could mean, like, it's not a big deal for you to have to change directors. You know, for each movie, could have a different director. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of potential in something like Zelda, I think, just because of the nature of the way the franchise works. Recognizable characters um, that are always there, 
almost in the same way that like Final Fantasy has almost always had Sid. You know what I mean? Like he's always there in some <laughs> capacity in almost every game. Sid's there. His job is always the same. He always does the same thing yep. or plays essentially the same role, but he's always a different person. Um, you know, so Link is always there, but what version of Link are you getting this time? Zelda is always there, but what version of Zelda are you saving this time? Um, you know, Ganon is there. Right. Who are you fighting this time? The fairies are always there. What they do is always the same. You know, a heart container is a heart container is a heart container. Like, that doesn't change. You know what I mean? The Triforce is the Triforce is the Triforce. That doesn't change. But the elements and aspects of how you get to it, and it literally means you could do animated ones, computer animated ones, live action ones. You could have a straight web series that, you know what I mean? Like, you could literally do so much. You could have... Almost the way Marvel has, the MCU is tied in to the movies as well as what they do on Netflix, as well as what they do on, say, Fox. But then what's happening in the cartoons is something completely separate, like, you know, like comics tends to be, right? Like, there's this thing's happening in this area, on this world, right? whatever. Zelda's kind of the same way. And you could have, you know, you could have multiple series be they movies or web series or animated series that coexist at the same time you know what i mean that that's probably the one property they really have that i think could do well um but i certainly think that nintendo could benefit from having some new ips um and i would say that's probably the thing that nintendo has struggled with the most over they have milked pardon my language they have milked the shit out of the properties that they have um, for a long, long time. And it's gotten time. pretty old and pretty stale. Don't get me wrong. I'm kind of excited about this new Mario because it reminds me of Mario 64. There has not been a Mario game as good as Mario Agreed. 64 since Mario 64 came out. For all the Galaxy naysayers, deal with it. It is what it is. <laughs> Galaxy is... Not even close to being as good as Mario 64. Not even close. Um, but you can't, I don't think you can make a movie out of that anymore. So, I don't know. I just thought it was kind of interesting that, you know, the partnership that they have, you know, you got to remember Universal is losing its Marvel properties. You know, those, those... <laughs> You know, mm-hmm. that Marvel stuff that's always been there, the X-Men and Spider-Man and the Incredible Hulk and all that kind of stuff, all those rides, like, all that's got to go away because Disney owns those properties. Now, <laughs> you got to imagine they're not going to keep letting a rival studio continue to use those properties. I mean, obviously, they could just keep making money off of them, I guess. But, right. You know, Universal had to do something and go somewhere. And so, I guess, you know, going with Nintendo makes a certain amount of sense. Sale? Yeah, I mean, I, you know... I still don't know that it's that that even that was really a great idea. Like I'm not necessarily excited about the. I'm way more excited about going to a theme park that's got Marvel themed stuff than I am about going to one that's got Mario themed stuff. It's just something that I haven't seen before, so I'd be interested in seeing it. But I'm not like, oh right. my goodness, there's gonna be a Super Nintendo Land. Like I don't really care. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it's just it's not the same thing. It's just not. Um, but. If Universal, you know, could get in cahoots, you know, it's hard to do something with, you know, something like that with somebody like Sony because Sony is also their own, you know, motion picture company. So you can't really do that with them. Mm-hmm. You kind of got to do it with, kind of got to do it with, with somebody like Nintendo. So I don't know. Ladies and gentlemen, tell us what you think. Um, do you think they're going to do movies? If so, what kind of movies would you like to see? Do you think there's stuff that's already in the works? Um, and are you excited about the idea of Nintendo themed parks, uh, by Universal? I'm kind of excited about some of those rides. I guess a Mario Kart ride should be pretty good. That, that but would do be they make it bumper cars? How they could do that. Which would make sense. Or is it a Mario <laughs> Kart roller coaster and the roller coaster looks like the Rainbow Road? Come on, bruh. Come on, mm. bro. It's like Space Mountain, <laughs> but you're like inside and it's dark, but the rainbow road is lit up. Black lights on the... That would be kind of dope. 
if it's a good roller coaster. I'm just saying. Anyway, you guys tell us what you think. New Joker, do you have anything that you feel like the people need to hear that you need to say to the world? Huh, I mean, Final Fantasy 15 is pretty damn good. Jeez Louise, bro. You had to bring up the Final Fantasy 15. Uh, you're what, level 50 something now? I just cracked 50. Are you, where are you chapter wise in the, in the game? I just went into chapter six. Okay. I'm still in chapter three. I'm just doing a little bit of, you know. I'm fun. literally just, I'm grind like in the lower chapters, what I would just do, like, I'm just trying to level up as much as possible. Um, mm -hmm. even though I've seen, I've seen people, believe it or not, have just straight played through and beat the game maybe in about 30, I think probably just under 30 hours is the fastest that I've seen it completed so far. Yeah. Um, yeah. and they, and they finished, I think at like level between level 40 and level 50, but yeah. like I'm literally playing and I'm trying to do all the, as many side quests as possible. At least when I get to the point, you'll run into some times where you'll get a side quest but you can't get to the location of where the side quest is because you haven't unlocked that area. Correct. And and I just keep and going. And sometimes the levels are really high on them anyway. Some of them, they are. I'm just happy yeah. now. Like, I can go out during the nighttime, and at yeah. this point, I've, I haven't had any issues. I've run into one issue where I ran into one of the um, the giant behemoth things, and it was like level... 60 something mm. but other than that i haven't had any issues like i i, I almost stay out all night now like when um uh, uh ignis actually like you know what nighttime's coming we should we, go well beforehand ahead. he would be like let's go ahead <laughs> like a little punk let's just go ahead and go back into town and i yeah. would just i would just deny it most of the time anyway but now he doesn't even ask anymore like because um no once you point. get strong enough he acknowledges you he's like You've become so strong. I'm more comfortable with driving at night. He yeah. actually, he actually yeah, said it cool. to me, and I was like, "Okay, that's dope." Yeah, but I'm with that. I'm fighting, man. I'm out collecting rare coins and you know all that or whatever, so I can run the run these these experience runs. Oh god, these experience runs are getting like I'm cracking hundred k here. 150k like if you can if you get enough of those coins and merge them together with um some of your elements and your then magic, yeah your magic and then you go like uh the chocobo guy the place where he has like the chocobo farm where you can go yeah he has a, a chocobo a sandwich. sandwich and like, yeah. i'm still trying to figure if that actually is made from chocobo if it is i'm i'm, I'm a little weirded by it's his it's not man it's not made from chocobo meat man yeah, i'm like i was i'm gonna be he like, wouldn't okay. feed you chocobo he loves chocobos that's what i'm though. saying it's like i don't know he wouldn't it's not that's not what it is man it's like a stack sandwich is what it's called or something like that but but you have to have 50, yeah you have to have like you can learn how to make it yourself at camps oh yeah you can but but you need it's like fine gigum ham or something like that like you need ham like there's a gigum ham and there's like a fine gigum ham or something like that and i think so you need the I gigum think I have ham. one and i just haven't made it yet like i it, it's sitting there and i can make it but i yeah. just i just oh you just it. been going back to him and buying them yeah i just been going back to him you, and buying them yeah are you staying at the uh at the hotel the, the oh that yeah gives you the double yeah the what i do is so I make sure I sleep. You sleep there, and then anywhere that you go, I say if it gets ready to be nighttime and you want to go back, you can just uh, fast travel back to the last place that you did that you rested at. Correct. Correct. As long as you know that that was that last place, and that's what I've been doing. Like I've just right. I keep grinding until I get like some ridiculous amount of experience, and then I just go back there. So what are you doing to grind your gill? Because so, it's expensive to stay there. It's like five G's. Well, it's supposed to be ten. But if yeah. you have the what is it, the traveler's the pack? The traveler's pack. <laughs> um, which I remember that you, <laughs> you hadn't you hadn't installed yours. No, I have. Because I remember asking you, like, <laughs> hey, are you seeing this? Like I it, it's like half price for me to stay anywhere or to like travel or whatever. And you're like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, well, let me show you. 
So now that you have it, so what have you been doing to stack your gill? So a lot of side missions, but the one in particular that gave me, I would say by the time I finished, I had maybe a hundred and some odd thousand gill. When mm -hmm. you get to the city where you meet, um, what's the big dude? His uh, his sister. Gladius. Yeah. Lister Gladius. Listeria. Yeah. Gladius. Like you go to like Listeria or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. There's a guy there that asks you to take photos for side quests. And like okay. every photo that you take, the gill, each one just becomes greater and greater each time. I mean, you go from like, you start like relatively something small, like a thousand to fifteen hundred gill. Then it goes right. to like three thousand gill. Then it's like five thousand. Then it's like ten. Like it goes, it just continues to increase. And what he okay. was like, one of his, he's like, oh, this is going to be like the final time or the final thing that I give to you. You know, I was kind of like, oh. But then right. after you do that, he still has more quests afterwards. So oh, wow. okay. I was just like, okay, you lied, and I'm still making bank <laughs> off of you for taking these pictures. Okay, I you mean, lied. And some of the pictures, like, I mean, you had to climb the, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in the distance when you're driving, you can see, like, the, uh, I guess it is a volcano. It's the volcano where yeah. you see, like, it almost looks like it has... I don't even know what you want to call it. Like, there's wings or something coming yeah. out of the rock. I don't know what you want to yeah. call it. You actually yeah. have to climb up that mountain or the volcano. You actually have to climb up the volcano and take a picture at the top where, like, it's spewing out lava. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. okay, did that. Then you got to go around and take pictures of, like, um, the Imperial Army's bases that you get ready to take down. He gives you, he gives you okay. money for taking pictures yeah. of those. Okay. But that by far has become the easiest, one of the easiest farming guild places that I found so far, and it still hasn't ended yet. So right, so you're doing that to farm the gill, and then are you going back and fighting? It's like this one creature. It's like right near the beginning of the game. But that, like, not. I haven't gone to that one. I a haven't lot gone of to people that are just yet. farming that dude. Like they're just now the rare coins. I'm running around and trying to collect those now. Um. So that you can mix those with elements, but um, you know, I know that the debase coins, like I have debase coins, I have debase silver coins, I have like tons of those things, man. Mm -hmm. Tons of those things, um, and I just stay out on my chocobos because they're they're you know it's faster, and then you build their levels, and then they get abilities to use you know for you and stuff like that too, mm -hmm. um. You know, I really just needed to keep my chocobos so they get high enough so I can get a green one. That's really all I needed. Yeah, I got to start but doing now that. I, oh, uh, you don't ride the chocobos? Oh, I started. You know when I started? And you know what? You haven't gotten to it yet. I won't, I'm won't. i not going to spoil nothing. Uh -huh. But just know you're going to get to a point where you cannot drive the regalia at all. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> That's cool. It, and it lasts like that. it lasts for... I would say almost a almost a whole chapter where you can't ride the regalia, and that's where I went ahead and got a chocobo, and I started riding around on it because you had to go collect certain things. Yeah, and they were they were distances away. Like if you had walked, it would have taken a good period of time. But don't get me wrong, chocobo it still took a little bit of time, but yeah. it was much quicker. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I just I did a couple of races. See, so the thing for me is, I jumped in and as I was uh, building up my, like setting up my characters, I was I was going in and I was getting the options like in my ascension, mm -hmm. getting all the ones that increase your AP yep. first. One of which is you can take long trips in the car, yep. but you can also do it for riding a chocobo. Well, the thing about doing it with a chocobo is that your chocobos are also going to increase in their stamina and their abilities and things like that, and so, you know. Like, one of the first upgrades you get for them is that you can call them into combat. Like, while you're in the middle of fighting, yeah. they'll just come in and kick the crap out of a dude. Or you can actually use them to escape sometimes um, from different battles. It's, you know, so it's it's useful. But I did that first. I increased all the AP that I get for all of what I'm doing so that I, you know, can get, can get you know, a little more, a little more AP out of it so I can boost boost my characters that way. Um, on top of, you know, shooting for the additional uh, XP. But anyway, 
we're having a blast playing that. And it, I've had to, I had to kind of back off a little bit because I'm trying to get through Watch Dogs and I still have a <laughs> bit to do. You know what I mean? And Watch Dogs. So I'm like jumping into Watch Dogs and playing for a couple of hours and then jumping off of that and jumping back into Final Fantasy. And I want to get, I want to get done with Watch Dogs because I want to go back to Dishonored 2. Which I was thoroughly enjoying, but I can't play all three of these at the same time. Like oh, honestly, definitely. just going back and forth between Watch Dogs and Final Fantasy is difficult enough because you have to consistently pull the map up kind of in both. And you do all that kind of stuff so differently that it kind of drives me nuts. Like for real, one of the things I hate about Final Fantasy is that you make the Chocobo jump with a different button than you make the I was the thinking the same with. thing. That's so like, dumb. And I'm looking at the it's rest so of them when they're riding, like, on side of me. You know, they're jumping with the chocobo. This is when I first started. And I'm like, why can't I jump? Am I missing something here? And then uh, I randomly... You can, like, float. Yeah. And I accidentally hit, uh, on Xbox control, I hit B. B, And, you know, right. we jumped. And I was like, okay, why would you do that? Yeah, because you jump with the A button, um, or it would be the X button on, on PlayStation if you're run if you're actually physically running around with your character so you jump with that button but when you're on a chocobo you jump with the b button or the circle button and when you're on the chocobo if you press the a button or the x button it makes you get off of the chocobo mm -hmm. drives me insane insane the other thing is like on on final fantasy you click in the right thumbstick to just pull the map up but in like watch dogs it's like the select button basically <laughs> to pull the map up and so like you know just because you kind of just in your head you just get oh i need to go to the map you don't necessarily think the game you just think the map and so it just takes getting used to kind of going back and forth it's kind of a pain in the butt and so just dealing with those and the different controls or whatever like i kind of have to put dishonored on pause and to be honest with you i am really really thoroughly thinking about jumping in and grabbing dead rising 4 i'm slightly disappointed at the fact that the full game isn't co-op and that's part of the reason why i didn't get it um but considering like usually sin and i play through those games in in co-op all the way through mm -hmm. but considering you can't do that there are co-op moments and i i hear that they are brilliant fun um, you know, they're four players. Like, I, I don't really want to do that until everybody's got it or is ready to get it or whatever. But because the main game itself is in co-op, you just have to play it by yourself. I'm kind of like, I might want to just jump in here and do this. And because it's holiday themed, like, even though I'm like, I could probably wait till like February or March and grab this. Mm -hmm. Nah, I'm not going to want to play a Christmas game. You know what I mean? Like a Christmas themed game in March. <laughs> it's not going to feel right. right. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, but that's probably not going to happen, just to be honest with you. Anyway, um, ladies and gentlemen, again, you can reach me, gauge.loadingsnacks at gmail.com uh, or on the social medias at Empty Shells. Uh, you can find me on Xbox Live or, you know, PlayStation. Also Empty Shells, but it's M space, T space, S, H, E, L, L, Z. Um... Make sure you go in and you follow our uh, Facebook page. Just search Loading Snacks. You'll find us. Uh, and make sure you go in and you subscribe to our YouTube page because we shoot videos every week. Every week. Um, so there's always something good there for you guys to see and probably laugh at, truthfully. Um, so make sure you do that. Um, I want to thank all the folks who are following us on Instagram. We constantly update that we do a lot of you know help promoting other things and showing other people's work and that kind of stuff anything that kind of tickles our fancy so you know artwork or comic book stuff or movie stuff or cosplay stuff or whatever we're like very close to getting like ten thousand we are uh, very followers close. there so that's 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 really cool and i appreciate those of you who already are following um thank you so much uh new joker they can reach you, New Joker eighty nine across the socials, right? Yes, sir. As well as Xbox Live and PlayStation, right? Yes, sir. And uh, they can follow you on Facebook at New Joker's Adventures, correct? You got it, my man. Uh, you guys go do that, so you can see what kind of adventures New Joker's having. Uh, with that, we're gonna close the show. 
Uh, do us a favor and drop us a comment. Let us know what you think. Um, we appreciate your love and support. With that, we're out. Toodles and lose.